Welcome everyone. So for this walkthrough, we're going to be working with the toyimports.r script and the toyimports.csv data file, both from the class website. And there are two learning goals uh, in this walkthrough. Number one is to practice some skills that we learned a little while ago, uh, specifically the data workflow skills using group, pipe, summarize, and filter. And number two is to use ggplot to make a line graph. So let's get started. Loading in a couple of libraries that we need pretty much throughout the course, ggplot2 and tidyverse. Uh, and then also reading in the data set. So again, you could use the command line right here on line four. I'll remind you, you can always come over to the first option under the import data set dropdown menu from text base and let's surf to where we've stored this data. Uh, for me, it's right here. You'll surf to wherever you've stored it on your own machine. So let's open it up. Looks like we're we are uh, got to go through our checklist here. So what do we want to call this? Toy imports. That's what we assume in the rest of the script. Does it have a header row? Well, it does, but R is actually making a mistake here and recognizing the first row of the data set, not as a header row, but as an actual object or uh, observation in the data set. So let's correct it. Heading equals yes. Comma, it's getting the comma right. So uh, again, showing the importance of this three-step checklist anytime you use the import data set window. Let's import the data. Here's our, our, uh, our studio viewer over here. We're not going to need that, and let's just go straight back over to the script. So look at the first several lines of this data set. Every row corresponds to a single trading partner in a single year and in a single product category of imports to the United States of various categories of toys. And you can see some of the, the product names here. There's reduced size scale model assemblies, electric trains, including tracks, toys representing animals or non-human subjects, uh, etc. So lots of different subcategories. They're all toys. So for example, here are the imports in 1996 from Argentina of toys representing animal or non-human subjects. And the dollar value in thousands of dollars uh, is over here in this US report import. That's how much US Customs Service uh, reported of imports from that country in that year of that particular product code. And here's the unique product code identifier according to the US Customs Service. We're gonna focus first on a single trading partner of the United States, and that's the United Kingdom. So let's filter our uh, full data set down here uh, on partner name. So we know partner name is here, and then we've gotta type in the full string of the partner name in quotation marks here, it's United Kingdom. And remember, we use double equal sign to test for equality. We'll store the resulting filtered data frame, a subset of the rows of this bigger data frame, in an object that we'll call UK underscore toys. And here are the first 10 lines of this data frame that we've created. Uh, every single one is from the United Kingdom. The partner code is GBR, year 96, 97, 98, et cetera. All right, so we've got multiple different product codes or product names in here. Uh, what I'd like to do first is just calculate a total value of all toy imports from the United Kingdom year by year. Uh, and that's gonna have us do a group pipe summarize operation. So. We're going to take all of the 1996s and group them together, all of the 1997s and group them together, uh, and so on, year by year. And for each of those years, we're going to sum up all of the possible uh, different product names, uh, U.S. report import values right there. Okay, so this uh, is going to sum all of these uh, values corresponding to 1996, and then all the values corresponding to 1997 and 98, and so on. And I'll, I'll take that and store the result in a UK toys total. And you'll see what I get from the result here. If I just ask, what do I get? Uh, you can see that there's two columns now. There's year and toys. Year was my grouping variable in my group pipe summarize pipeline up here. And toys was the variable I created by summing this US report import variable across all product categories uh, within a single year. Again, the units here are in thousands of dollars, so 7657 would be $7 million. Let's plot the result over time in a line graph. So remember the basic logic of ggplot is that all plots are mappings of data variables to aesthetic properties of geometric objects. And in the case of a line plot, our geometric object is a line, and we draw a line kind of in the same way you would on an Etch-a-Sketch by connecting the dots. So let's look at the syntax for a line plot. We've got our data frame of summary statistics here, year by year, the total number of toy and total value of toy imports in that year from the United Kingdom. And we're going to take as the, the geometric property of our line, the X and the Y coordinates of our 
connect the dots. Okay, so we don't actually see the dots, we just see the line that connects them. And this is telling ggplot to take the year variable and map it to the horizontal location or x coordinate, and the toys variable and map it to the vertical or y coordinate here. Okay, so we've got our line graph. Now you might notice that this x-axis looks a little bit goofy. It seems to have sp uh, split it on like decimal years, 1997.5, 2000.0. Uh, so what we'll do here is just add a, a little extra uh, kind of nicety to this plot of manually telling ggplot where to put the axis ticks. And we specify that with a third layer here. So you notice I've got uh, an additional, probably have a space there, an additional plus to add a new layer onto the end of this basic plot that I made just here. And I'm adding a layer scale underscore x underscore continuous. And this is how you tell ggplot that we have a continuous uh, variable that's being measured along the x-axis. And where should we put the breakpoints? And this is saying put the breakpoints at every value from 1996 to 2005, and that's what that colon represents. It gives you a sequence of integers starting at 1996 and ending at 2005. So you'll see when I execute this, I now get an axis tick at every year, and then I've got a perfectly serviceable line graph showing to toy imports going up, uh, going down in the uh, recession that took place in the very early 2000s in the wake of the bust of the dot-com bubble, if anybody is old enough to remember that, uh, and then rising again. All right, let's now look at, rather than just a single country, three countries. And we'll pick China, the Republic of Korea, that's South Korea, and uh, the same one we've been working with so far, so far the United Kingdom. So first I'm actually going to define just a list of countries. So this here is a, a vector of strings, and we just put these strings together using the command C. C stands for combine or concatenate, lots of verbs that begin with C that mean basically the same thing. It's just a list of strings, China, Korea, Republic, and the United Kingdom. Now we're going to filter for any, uh, take our, our big data set that has all of the U.S.'s trading partners in it, and we're going to filter that down for all of the partners that are in our list. And this is how we do that. We have percent sign in percent sign, and that basically tells us let's take all of the rows of our toy imports data frame where the partner name is in this list of countries that I've just defined right here. Okay, so if I do that, and I just execute, say, that line right there, paste it down here in the console, just pipe the, the big data set to the filter, I get still a quite a large data set. It's all, all rows, all years, all product categories uh, corresponding to those three partners that we listed, United Kingdom, China, and Korea. Okay, but, but this gets a little more interesting when we pipe it to subsequent operations here. So having now uh, piped to filter and filter down the rows uh, for all countries that appear in this list, all three of them, let's pipe the result to group by, and we're going to group by two variables, every partner name, so all three of these, and every year from 1996 up to 2005. And for each combination of partner name and year, we're going to sum the total value of U.S. imports of toys across all of the different subcategories of toys, you know, model trains and uh, animals representing, uh, you know, non-human subjects or something like that. Uh, and that'll be our summary, uh, and we'll define uh, the summary variable called toys, and it is the sum of the total value across all of those categories. So I'll call the resulting data frame combined toys. And if you see what I've got now here on line 39, just putting your cursor and hitting command enter, you've got uh, a summary data frame where there's one row for every combination of year and partner name, and then the sum total dollar value in thousands of dollars of toy imports across all of those product categories. And this is our long form set of summary statistics. There's the first 10 rows right there. Now let's plot all three of these as a line graph. We're gonna have a slightly more uh, sophisticated set of aesthetic mappings here. Let's just execute this block of code from lines uh, 43 to 45, and you'll see what you get. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about what you're seeing and then why it's a little problematic. So first of all, we're seeing, well, three line graphs. One for China, one for the Republic of Korea, one for the United Kingdom, represented in different colors over here in the legend. How do we know uh, the colors? Well, because we told ggplot here on line 44, map year to the x-coordinate, toys to the y-coordinate, and the partner name, this categorical variable that we, uh, that we filtered on right here, to the color of the line. That's where we get three different colored lines. And then again, adding our, uh, our nice uh, set of axis breaks here, one little axis tick for every year. So this plot uh, is what we asked for, but as a, a storytelling uh, device uh, for kind of communicating about toy imports, 
uh, it's a little bit problematic. And the reason is that these three time series are on a vastly different scale. You can see the total value of toy imports from China towering above these other two countries right here. And so the solution for a situation like this, where you're trying to compare data values or data time series uh, across vastly different scales, this measured in the millions, this measured in the billions, is to use a logarithmic scale, okay? Uh, so we will change our y-axis here from an ordinary linear scale to a base 10 logarithmic scale. And so you can see what we've done is taken our base plot that we started with on lines 43 through 45, copied and pasted it down here, and now added a fourth layer to change the y-axis not to be a linear scale, but a log base 10 scale. And we do that with plus scale underscore y underscore log 10. And you'll see what we get here. Now, instead of increasing uh, in regular jumps, this increases one power of 10 at a time. 10 to the power fourth, 10 to the power fifth, that's 100,000. 10 to the power sixth, that's a million. And remember, because these are in thousands of dollars, a thousand times a million is a billion dollars. That line actually represents a billion dollars right there. And now we're seeing that we have a scale that allows us to compare this time series with these two that are on, all on vastly different orders of magnitude. And of course, if you wanted to get even a little bit more specific than this, you could actually also add a set of manual breaks to your y-axis right here. Just tell it, say, let's break it 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, a million, and 50 million. And we'll get this slightly irregular set of breaks. Okay. So we've, uh, we've done two things in this walkthrough. One is review all of the machinery uh, surrounding data workflow, piping, filtering, grouping, and summarizing. We've seen how to make a line graph, uh, and in fact, a, a set of related line graphs coded by color. And then as a little bonus, we've seen how the use of a logarithmic scale on the y-axis can help us compare time series that span many, many different orders of magnitude without, as we had in the original graph, uh, say down here, making two out of those three time series squished down here around zero. So that's a wrap on this walkthrough. Happy coding, and we'll see you next time.